Hey guys, so today we're going to talk about E3, and I'm not going to do it alone. I'm joined by Shido, my friend. Hello! Yay! You've seen him probably in my Dead Rising 2 videos where I play good and he plays bad, but yeah. Fuck you. Anyways, so um, yeah, we're going to talk about the conferences a little bit. I guess Microsoft was first, so we'll start with that. The first thing they showed off was um, Metal Gear Solid 5. I heard it might be coming to PC. It did look pretty good from what I saw. Yeah, it, it looked pretty good. Um, it's supposed to be open world, you know, which, you know, is good. Anything open world, I think, is usually pretty good. And uh, I don't know how the whole real-time passage thing's going to work, but, you know. And a PC Metal Gear Solid, I mean, that'd be awesome. Yeah, the first two are on PC, but three and four aren't on PC, so, like, I'm going to get confused story-wise. In part four, I remember he was, like, really old, and in part five, he looks younger. Like, what's up with that? Um, apparently, I guess, I didn't know this, uh, a friend of mine told me, apparently, though, the one in part four is, like, a clone, like, this is the original Snake, and supposedly this takes place, um, I read it somewhere today, that supposedly it takes place in, like, 1984. There's, like, two games that make up Metal Gear Solid Five too. There's one called Ground Zero, and the other is, like, The Phantom Pain, I think. Yeah, the one they showed off was The Phantom Pain, I believe. The Ground Zero, supposedly, is is attached to this one. Right. I think Kiefer Sutherland's doing the voice of Snake now. Was it Snake or was it the other guy, the old dude, Ocelot? I heard it was Snake, but maybe that was just like a troll. I don't know. I'll have to look it up and see. But it's kind of messed up if they did change the Snake voice, because, like, David Hayter's... He is Snake. That'd be like replacing, um, Agent 66's voice. Agent 66? Or whatever his name is. The dude from Hitman, what the fuck's his name? Moving on. Dark Souls 2? Yeah, it, it looks cool. Another Have you hack played any Dark Souls? Like 10 minutes of like Dark, Dark Souls <laughs> 1. I mean, it was it was alright. It's still another hack and slash to me. Yeah, it's supposed to be like really difficult. and The trailer really put the emphasis on that. Like The song in the trailer was like, Again and again, I'll come back. Meaning you'll respawn a lot. Alright, so next, what's on your list? We could go over the new Xbox Slim, you know, the, the, if you want, or, um, hey, World of Tanks is coming to the Xbox, right? Pay to win? Hey, World of Tanks? <laughs> World of Tanks? Yep. Yeah. Hey. Yeah. Except it's not free to play on the Xbox, because you have to pay for Xbox Live. Exactly, and I was good, but I was gonna say, um, Xbox Live Gold members, they will carry, I did find out or we did find out that um it does carry over to you know xbox one which is good and they're gonna be offering us two free games a month you know games like halo 3 and assassin's creed 2 games that have been out a while and there was that that kitty game that didn't look at all like a kid could play it max the curse of brotherhood yeah <laughs> Oh, what about Rise? Rise, that looked... Yeah. That looked Rise something. from uh, League of Legends? Take this scroll and stick it! N no, I'm pretty sure Rise from League of Legends would own this shit. Yeah, it, Rise... It, it's made by Crytek. They made Crisis, And then they started making council games, and that's when they turned to shit. For, for a game that made by the people who make Crisis, I didn't think it looked that good. And then they show gameplay and it's another fucking hack and slash. Whoop! It wasn't even a hack and slash. It was like, um, what are those time based? What's it called? Like, where real you have to push a. Yeah, real yeah, time. real time crap. Yeah, it's like, okay, you know, press this button now. Oh, you fail at pressing buttons fast enough. Yeah, sorry, not real time. Quick time. I think. Yeah, yeah, that's what it was. Yeah. I thought graphically it looked good, but th yeah, the fights are like quick time and it, it just. Bleh. Alright, so after that was a game I I heard about, 
like rumors that it might happen, and it did happen. Killer Instinct. Mm -hmm. um, one my favorite fighting game of all time is Killer Instinct One for the arcade. I used to play the Super Nintendo one all the time. Um, but yeah, this one is gonna be Xbox exclusive because <laughs> pretty sure it's Microsoft uh, published. So yeah, I'm gonna have to miss out on that unfortunately. One interesting thing about it though is it's also it can be free to play. Like it's a free to play fighting game where you have to I guess buy new characters. Yeah, I heard that. Uh, I, I was going to mention, like, I heard from an interview later that it's like, you get one character to start with, and the only way to get the other ones is, like, you have to buy them or something? It, like, what? Yeah, how it works is, you could you could actually buy the full game, like, normally, so, you know, there's no complaints there. But if you don't want to buy the full game, you could just play it for free, and then just buy the characters you want. I just wonder um, how much the characters are going to be. Yeah, probably bare minimum five dollars per character or something. Yeah, I mean a lot. A lot of people seem to be against free-to-play fighting games, but there's been a lot lately, and I find it kind of interesting, really, because you pretty much just master like one or two characters anyway. So. Yeah, yeah, no, that's that's true. I mean, it's um. It, the idea is a good idea. It could work out, and then it's got a you know a property that people have been clamoring for forever. It's just a shame that it's going to be stuck to you know Xbox only. All right. So next on my list is Minecraft. <laughs> Minecraft on Xbox still not as good as the PC version. I was actually going to mention. I don't know if you were going to mention this, but um, Sunset Overdrive, Insomniac Games' new game. Uh, uh, look, look, kind of okay. Like, if it's not console exclusive, uh, stylized open world shooter, and supposedly every day, like the experience can change. Yeah, they didn't show actual gameplay for that, though, right? Not, not really. I don't think so. It, it looks like... just like a CGI trailer, I think. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, so I didn't mention it. I, I don't really know anything about it other than what you just said. Yeah. Oh, uh, oh. I know what else. We gotta talk about Forza ra uh, Racing. Oh, uh, yeah. There's been a lot of racing games to, in these conferences. I just... Yeah, I don't care. Next is Quantum Break by Remedy, makers of Max Payne and Alan Wake. I like Remedy, but they kind of screw over PC gamers to make Xbox games now, so it's kind of hard to care about them these days. It's a shitty looking game from the, the the trailer from the video and then it's got a collab with a probably equally shitty TV show. Woo! Oh, it's going to be a TV show too? I believe so. I believe that's what I heard. Yeah. Like uh, Defiance? Yeah, cuz that that's so awesome too, right? <laughs> oh, I don't know. I haven't seen the show yet. Um I don't know. I don't think the trailer looked bad, but what, there was no gameplay. So I I don't know much about it other than it uses bullet time, I'm pretty sure. They love bullet time over there. Oh yeah, they got they they molest that shit. Uh yeah, next on my list is a game I am looking forward to is Dead Rising Three. And it looks good, just like all the other Dead Rising games. It's just I'm not gonna play it for a console. <laughs> yeah, it'll be out on PC, I'm sure. I like that they showed a bunch of gameplay. It wasn't just like a CGI trailer or you know a bunch of cutscenes. It was just boom, just a bunch of gameplay, and I was really into it. All right, so what's next? The Witcher. Oh, yay! Look, a Witcher game. You know, cause we just had one, didn't we? <laughs> yeah, I'm still behind on my Witcher games. I have the first two, and I actually just recently started playing the first one. But I have to say, I'm having a tough time getting through it, just cause uh, it's it's kind of boring to me. I like the story, but the gameplay is not it's not my cup of tea. At least yeah. in the first one. The, the second one, the gameplay looks a lot better. But the first one, it runs on, like... I think the same engine, like, Neverwinter Nights 1 was on. Yep. Which is an uh, engine that is not that great. Alright, so what's next for you? Uh, I was going to bring up Project Spark, and I wanted to see what you thought of it. It looked like, like adult, sort of like adult Minecraft, but it looked really cool. I just, I looked at it, and who are they, who, who is that for? Um, other than maybe, like, Minecraft-type players, I can't see children playing <laughs> that. It looks maybe a little too advanced for kids. I mean, maybe teenagers, uh, I don't know, little big planet players, maybe? You know, maybe they're gearing towards them? Yeah, that's what I was thinking, like, maybe it's trying to be, like, the new little big planet type. 
but yeah. Yeah. Hey, what about Xbox Smart Ass? I mean, glass. Smart glass. Don't yeah. care. Yeah, you, know, you can use your tablet or your or your phone. Well, yay. Yeah, I really don't care for all these tablets and phone integration into my games. Like, it just seems dumb to me. It's a neat concept. I just don't necessarily think. To me, all that's going to say is, oh, we can take shortcuts in making quality games by, hey, oh, you know, this game might not be that good, but hey, look, you can use your tablet to do this, or you can use your phone to do this. Just seems like more unnecessary gimmicks to me. I don't know. Yeah, I, I agree. I guess you could mention it's not a big deal. I guess is Xbox uh, partnering with Twitch, which I, I was happy for in a sense because like I can't use Twitch on my consoles, you know, obviously right now. So like, um, and I use Twitch a lot um, for at least viewing, not so much streaming. I wonder how games are going to run with. If you're streaming to Twitch, though, because like on PC, it, it really bogs down my computer when I try to live stream a video game. So I'm curious to see how it'll work on consoles. Um, so yeah, next is Battlefield 4. What are your thoughts on Battlefield 4, Mark? Hey, an X pack for Battlefield 3. Yay! Yeah, it does look a lot like Battlefield 3, like pretty much a $60 map pack. Um, so Call I of Duty it. Yeah, pretty much. I don't like that they came out with 4 so so soon. It seems like Battlefield 3 just came out yesterday, you know? <laughs> and um, I, I did see some more of it today. There's a, They had a, another live stream today with some more gameplay. and It looks alright, and they had some more features that probably should have been in Battlefield 3. But uh, other than that, yeah. I, I'm not going to pre-order it this time like I did with Part 3. I'll wait till it gets to $20 or less. So yeah, what's next? Halo, right? Hey, Halo, cause yeah, Halo. Halo fifty. I don't Halo. care. Halo five million. I and then, know. hey, what about Titanfall? I mean, Titanfall. You know, the Halo-looking game that you can play while you're waiting for Halo to come out. Oh, well, before we get to that, they they mentioned the price of the Xbox. Oh yeah, that four ninety nine, five hundred dollars. Clap. Clap, clap. Xbox One will launch this November in 21 markets around the world at $499 in the US and 499 euros in European markets and 140, uh, 429 pounds in the UK. Yeah. And of course, all the DRM having to go online every 24 hours and stuff. What else is there? Oh yeah, That's used games. That's pretty much dead, used games on the Xbox now. I don't know how they're gonna have the game rentals. They're not, is what, they're, what it's gonna <clears> be. They're, they're not. So yeah, that's interesting. If you want to call it interesting, I, I, I don't know, I just... I'm, I'm thinking, what I'm thinking is that they are going to announce later on that they've got a partnership with somebody, some kind of broadband service, and they're gonna say, look, you sign up with this broadband service that will put you online, you know, all the time, which is what you need to be able to play your system, and the, we will give you, or the service will give you, anywhere between 100 to 200 to maybe even $300 off the purchase of the system. That's what I'm expecting is going to happen, and that's what's going to start pushing those sales, because right now, why would you buy an Xbox? Yeah, I don't know. Right now, it's looking very bad for Xbox. Like, there's a huge fallout online. Everyone's hating on them. But I, you just know on day one it's going to be sold out and there's going to be you know, a huge line to buy it, so I don't know. GameStop, the pre-orders are already gone. Like, I have a, a friend who works at GameStop as a manager and he said, oh, pre-orders for Xbox are already gone and you have to put $100 down just to pre-order one of these consoles now. And it's like, well, I don't know however many that they, were gonna, they got <laughs> from day one, but however many they got, all gone. Yeah, so there you go. That proves my point. It's gonna sell like crazy no matter what. Yep. You could like price it at double that price and it'll still probably sell out. Oh, of course. I don't want to get to uh, Titanfall. Um, oh, yeah. I actually think it looks pretty good. It's basically Call of Duty with mechs. <laughs> the original developers of the Call of Duty franchise, they, you know, had a falling out with Activision after Modern Warfare 2. 
And then, so they left them and made their own company, and this is the game they made. I think it looks pretty good. I mean, it looks it looks fine. It just I don't know. It's it's another shooter, another like futuristic type. It, it to me it looked kind of Halo-ish. I, I I'm just I mean I know like you you're gonna get your same games. You're gonna get your sports games every year. You're gonna get your shooters every year. All that. It just <sighs> something really. I want someone to do something really really outside the box, and this just wasn't it to me. I mean, okay, cool, you got hmm. mechs, okay. Right, it's the same old, same old, pretty much. Um, I was surprised to hear that it's on the, I believe it's on the Source engine, which is pretty nice looking for a Source engine, an old engine like that. So yeah, that's pretty much all I got to say about that. Overall, but I guess, uh, yeah, that, that's pretty much it. I, I could say that, like, to me, I'm not, I've never been a huge Microsoft fan, I've never been a huge Xbox fan. Um, I do, I, I have owned a console, you know, at least once, um, and they were actually the console I went to for RPGs for a good long while when, um, well, it's, they still don't make them anymore, they don't come out anymore for the PS3, but, you know, when Sony seemed to completely give up on, on RPGs, 360 was still put having, you know, RPGs come out, and, um, you know, they really had a really big audience, they really captured a lot of gamers, and to see them kind of shoot themselves in the head like this, it's just, it's mind-blowing. Alright, well I guess that does it for the Microsoft one. Next right. is, uh, EA! 